Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Going to George Fort Title, who's a YouTube reporter, uh, and he went down to Mexico City. We've had a lot of folks from Mexico City on, Sherry Tenpenny from Mexico, other people from Mexico reporting, and they were all saying a lot more people sick than was being said, a lot more people, and that there were troops running around. It was all scary, but then suddenly it turned out those were just regular flus, regular colds, regular people dying of pneumonia, kind of a mass panic, kind of a War of the Worlds deal where folks were out shooting water towers thinking they were tripod alien creatures, you know, and when Orson Welles did that, kind of the same deal. So George, I remember when he was, I saw a YouTube video where he was freaked out about to go down to Mexico City, already wearing a mask in Southern California. He got there and found out it was a huge hoax, and the show ran out yesterday as we were finishing up. Uh, and so uh, tell us exactly what you witnessed. You said, just to prove this, you've gone and shot video. I haven't seen your channel lately, uh, but have you posted that or had a chance to where you go into the hospital and take your mask off? Tell us what you saw in Mexico City, George. Alex, thank you. Uh, you know, as you come down here, you have a total sense of fear from what the <laughs> mainstream media has been telling you about the, the flu. And, but as you get here and you start to talk to people, you start to realize more and more that it's just entirely a big charade. And I just got so frustrated one day. Uh, I actually have a video of this on my website. I said, I'm going to go into this emergency room. And, and they had uh, swine flu cases in this hospital. And I said, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take off my mask, and I'm going to hang out in there. And you know what? I did that, and, and, and even my taxi driver came with me, and I videotaped it. And, um, you know, I, I just wanted to prove to my followers or my listeners that – it, it, it's it's a, it's a charade. This is the regular flu. People are going in with regular flu. They're not dying in, in, in these massive numbers that they're talking about. And and even if they even if we had a few hundred deaths here, that doesn't justify shutting down a city of twenty million plus. I mean, it's twenty million people live here. And, and that's the key. Let me that. stop you. That's the key. Is that imagine if they're talking about total martial law, forced inoculations, going to level six for a few dozen people dying when regular flu kills a quarter of a million every year conservatively, what is the deal? What is going to happen when there's just a regular flu and it kills thousands? Are they going to use that for martial law takeover as a smokescreen during uh, economic collapse? And, yes, that is the number one playbook attack profile. This was a beta test. We know now what their attack profile is going to be. That is, again, let's say they got five plays they might pull on us coming up as things collapse. That's the number one play. Kind of like when they keep throwing Hail Marys, you know that's what this coach is going to do. Well, these guys are running it up the middle with the bio, uh, you know, attack hysteria, and they beta tested this. What were folks saying inside the hospital? Uh, basically, I didn't really get to talk to them, but when we, I eventually got to a doctor, and I have a footage on my channel of a hidden camera talking to a doctor, and I was actually somewhat sick. I, I, had a, I think I had the stomach flu, and I went in there as a regular patient, and she, she, she basically said in Spanish, uh, people have translated this for me, that it is totally overblown. That, you know, I, didn't, I with, even with my symptoms, my similar flu-like symptoms, she, I, I did not have swine flu. I did not have the All symptoms. Right. And I believe in the report she talks about that. She talks in detail, like a 10-minute report in Spanish of what's actually really going on. I mean, it, it is scary. When you go in there, everyone is, has masks on. They're tearing people's clothes in red well, bags. Sir, with, sir, how do you what? know you even had stomach flu? I mean, anybody that goes to Mexico for a few days, especially Mexico City, you're going to get Montezuma's revenge. I, I mean, <laughs> You know what? That, that's probably what it is. I'm taking Bactrim, an antibiotic, which they gave me, and I'm taking Imodium. So I don't know how severe well, I that mean, is. I mean, but, sir, I, I, mean, I mean, have you ever been to Mexico City before? Yes. I mean, did did you get a stomach ache last time? No, no. Right, but well, I haven't been here for a long period of time. I mean, sure, I well, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, it could be that, it could be that, or it could be this. We did get confirmed reports from caller after caller and doctors and people in Mexico that a lot of people had stomach type flu, but this is supposedly respiratory though, so it's probably just a regular stomach virus. The evidence shows this is a very communicable virus. It's just very mild, but that's what we were saying earlier. It could be that it's going to mutate into something worse because it's clearly designer. So the globalists are evil. We have to say, is this a dummy virus to test spreads, as they have said in papers they wanted to do, a virus that's weak but very communicable to test a very virulent, deadly flu? 
or is it going to mutate into something worse or combine with other viruses? The UN's now fear mongering saying that. So I'm thinking everything from their perspective, their mindset. Your comments on that? Uh, all I have to say, Alex, is 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 my my taxi driver is now sick, so he's at home. I mean, I don't believe he has swine flu. But I, I, and I'm getting over whatever I have. It was probably Montezuma's revenge. But I can tell you, as you go into the emergency room, you can see the fear in people's eyes. I mean, if you open the newspapers here, everything is about the influenza. But when you talk to people, they're, they're basically telling you it's, it's a panic. They call it, they even have a name for it. They call it panico. It's, it's like a commonly used term for but you know, the government uh, just... But you know, folks are not worried about that now. They're not worried about the police state. They're not worried about the collapsing economy. They're not worrying about SDRs and the IMF taking Mexico over. They're only worried about the flu or talking about how it shut down their life. Again, a perfect way when revolution's coming to a head to slap it down is to release this. Anything else, sir, from Mexico City? Real quick, two points that I've been hearing from the people here. They, they, they wonder why Obama visited, Obama left. And then all the politicians got together for some type of meeting here, and then all of a sudden it just it hit the streets. Big pan panic, uh, epidemic. And then the second point is this is timed just with their senator, uh, sen senator elections in, in one month, and that just kind of put off bells in my head. Well, there's no doubt, and every Mexican we've talked to from Mexico says they're using it as a smoke screen from all their criminal activity. Okay, well, uh, the website is George Fertonadel. Uh, up on uh, YouTube channel. Hey, what do you think of them uh, banning the Alex Jones channel for showing a news article? When 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 Google is stealing every book on the planet, claiming they own it and digitizing it, flaunting. I mean, it's obviously fair use. Washington Journal does it. All these other TV shows show news articles. I mean, I mean, the news shows clip outs. This is asinine crap. And they said if the Pittsburgh Post Gazette does not remove their uh, DNC tech down order. The site isn't going back up. So I guess, in fact, give me the number to the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. And, and in fact, I want their number. I'm going to give that out later. I mean, they are a real piece of work. But who's the bigger piece of work, them or YouTube? I mean, I mean, think about it. Over 2,000 videos, a million views a week. I mean, we were just counting up the weeks. A million here, half a million there, a million here. No way to count up a year and a half with, you know, uh, in the last six months or so, millions of views a week. My God, this is incredible. No, Alex, you know what it is? There's groups behind this that are flagging your videos, they're reporting your videos, and they're working in collusion with YouTube to, to get that site down. I can no, say no, they've contacted us. They've con I mean, they comment and go, you bastard, we're going to shut you down, we're going to keep filing fake complaints. And so, you know what, I'm going to give YouTube what they want. I'm going to give their stinking phone number out, and I want them called today. I want them called tomorrow. I want them called next week. Uh, George, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate your report from there. Maybe we'll get another one from you uh, coming up. Are you concerned for the safety of your loved ones? Listen closely to this message from Pepperspray.com. Every 22 seconds a violent crime is committed. America has changed, and your personal safety is your first priority. Be smart. Be safe. Trust Pepper Spray instead of your luck. Pepperspray.com is the only website you'll ever need for all of your non-lethal self-defense supplies. Pepperspray.com carries one of the largest assortments of pepper spray and personal safety products on the web. From big to small, we have it all. Pepper Spray, mace, animal repellents, stun guns, and tasers. Pepperspray.com also carries a large assortment of products for personal, home, child, and pet safety. Enter SAFE in the coupon box and you'll receive a special discount off of your order. So what are you waiting for? Go to Pepperspray.com. That's Pepperspray.com. Or call 1-800-908-9988 today.